So we left off last time with our device connecting to the network, KRC guest, and getting an IP address. Now, if I go to that address on my computer, I'm going to get nothing because we're not hosting web page here. So we're going to, have to actually do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download two libraries. Unfortunately, library manager doesn't have the right versions in here. So we're going to take and download them from the links in the description or on Classroom. So the two ones we need are ESP Async Web Server and ESP Async TCP Master. I'm going to put this here and I'm going to copy this and put it, uh, move this here. So I'm going to go to Downloads. Right click, extract all, extract. I'm gonna do the same thing, right click, extract all, extract. And then while that's doing it, I'm gonna go on the other side, go to documents, Arduino folder, and go to the libraries folder. Now I'm going to go into the two folders. I'm going to grab that first one. I'm going to take, grab this folder, drag it over, and then we're going to rename it and remove the master. That master is from GitHub. Um, it's just a source code management tool. So I'm going to go into the second folder, grab the folder, drag it over, and delete it. Now. Let's go back to our view so we can see the ESP and see the code. And the first thing we're going to add is we're going to add a place to let me go out of the code. We're going to include those two libraries. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go pound include ESP, ESP capitalization counts, A sync TCP dot h and pound include esp async web server dot h with the carrots on either end and before i do anything else i'm going to hit the verify button i'm going to hide this and click like compile now while it's compiled i'm going to keep working but this will let us know if the libraries work. And the first build always takes forever anyway. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a instance of our web server. So we create an instance of our screen. The way we do that is by doing uh, async web server server on port 80, which is the typical page for web pages, typical port for web pages. Uh, again, AP comp site principles will talk about all the ports and things of that nature and how that stuff works. And then the last thing we need to do is build a web page, which is going to, as far as Arduino is concerned, is just a big bunch of text. It doesn't know anything about it. So I'm going to put a comment for myself. And a const const char index for HTML or brackets uh, m e r o g m e m dash equals capital R quote raw literal um, what I believe is doing is creating this and storing it in different section of memory, so it's not using your program code area. Self returns, and at the very end of this thing, is going to be a closed proxy, and then raw literal quote. So everything between this open frenzy and closed frenzy is going to be one big honking string of text. And again, I'm just going to scroll back to what was being. So we're going to do some HTML, which is very basic. You might have done some other things, but if not, you're going to learn about it today. So the first thing we're going to do is tell the web page what I think this is, which is an HTML page. So open wedge, here, 
doc type basically HTML, which is hypertext markup language, basically a web page, and then HTML tag, and then head, and then between that the head and the top bottom, we're gonna put slash head. and slash html so most of our stuff can go inside this area so the first section is going to be our header and for our header really we just need um tell to set up the viewport so right tab at a name equals Viewport. This is stuff that's going to be useful for the JavaScript we'll do later. Content equals width equals device dash width. Basically, get the width of the screen. Initial dash scale equals one. Tag and I want your title. I ESP eighty two sixty six of sites. And then we're going to do slash title. It compiled fine. That first compile is a very long wait, but you might as well keep work while it's thinking. So now in the actual, let's go put something inside up on the actual body. So we're gonna put a body tag and a slash body tag. And our actual web page will go inside this area. And I'm going to put in there H2, which is heading two. RGB lamp controller slash H2, basically turn off H2. And then we're just going to put in something there. We're going to put hello slash P. And this should create a small web page that whose title is my ESP2 website, and then with a text lamp controller, and then hello. Let's test it out and see if it actually works. We're gonna make sure that our device is connected properly. It's COM4, so we're gonna hit forward. At this point, I'll pause the video while it does its thing because no one's gotta watch that. Of course, compilation fails when you spell things wrong. Then you see const, don't check that my reference code. I'm looking at my other laptop right behind here because I'm not gonna, so const char index HTML array prog mem equals capital R quote raw literal open parenthesis. Yeah, chance versus const. Let's try that again. Again, I'll pause this. Is... All right, no one's gonna have to wait for that. So we're connecting to the Wi-Fi, carries this. Once we get a connection, still connecting. We have a connection. I'm going to go back to my little web page and let's refresh it. And with any luck, we should get something back. And I'm going to test it on my personal computer, make sure it's not a problem with it. On your guys, you'll have to do it on your Chromebooks. These lab computers will not work properly. So go here and Oh, that's because I didn't actually handle the web request. I wrote the web page, but I didn't actually do anything with it. So, again, this is fairly complicated. I'm going to make mistakes. Let's go a little further. At least we didn't get a compilation error. So, I'm going to download my code more. Let 
and I'm going to head down to the thing. And then in our setup, we need to route our connect up the request for web page to send the web page. So we're going to go to our into our setup code. And before we do anything in the main in our loop, we're going to now take in um, web page. The note to myself, remember that. And then we're going to do server uh, on. And when we get asked for just the starting point as an HTTP get. some array of async web server request named request we then take and do a uh, well serial dot print Ending an LN ending web page. And then let's send it. So it's going to request arrow operator, the dash less than send underscore P 200. I'm a quote text slash HTML quote comma index underscore HTML comma. and I believe we have to write that processor script. Um, so. And then we need to close the parentheses and the semicolon. Oh, and then we need to do our last thing is server dot begin. For start. Now let's go up and we have to add that processor method. This is gonna be more important later, but let's quickly write it so we have it. And all our processors are gonna do is just return whatever it gets, which doesn't really make sense right now, but you'll see later, it'll give us some power thing. So we wanna to go to string, write string. Uh, Or const string ampersand var, and it's just going to return string. It doesn't really do much, but we do need to have that. Let's recompile again. I will pause while it compiles. And again, I have typo, so we send capital P, it turned orange, that's probably better. Run it, and I'll pause again while that's thinking. All right, so we're finishing uploading. It's now connecting back to the server, to the what the, the web, uh, to the network. Once it connects, then we'll be able to try again and hope things behave. Again, you will have to use your Chromebook to do this next part because your my computer in my room will not work. So let's try connecting. Hey, look, it says my ESP 826 website that matches the text right here. Then it says RGB lamp controller. That's right here. And it says hello, which matches here. It works. Again, this should only work on your Chromebook and the IP address you need to use 
isn't necessarily 10.10.40.120, but whatever this is. So in this case, 10.10.40.120. My other one is 10.10.40.166. They will typically be 10.10.40 something at here. When you bring these home, they'll be more likely to address something like in the order of 192.168. That's something that's something. So whatever network, the screen will tell you who his address is and let you connect to him. And we now have a web page hosted right on this chip. This chip is the web server. When I'm sending stuff, I am literally sending code over the internet to this chip. The chip is sending back this web page. We'll use that next to make a button to turn on and off the LED.